The third training that I had came around 1982. It was part of my doctoral work. I started to get very interested in the power of drama to, to heal. So I studied both psychodramatic methods and dramatic projective methods. And in the late uh, 80s, I became registered as a drama therapist, and that's been my career for 30 years. Now, I don't know if you know, but Erickson, when he got very old himself, created a, a final stage to life that he calls integrity versus despair. So I think my movement now that I'm getting a little bit older is towards the integrity part, trying to bring it all together. And that's what I'm going to talk about with ethno-drama therapy. Has anybody here ever watched an I Love Lucy episode? Please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got a little bit of cultural consensus. You know, when uh, Lucy, uh, uh, Lucille Ball, great comedic actress, what she used to do was get in some kind of hairball scheme, like the time she and Ethel got in the chocolate factory, and then Ricky, who was a Cuban-American band leader, would come home, and he would say to her in his Cuban-American accent, Honey, you got some splaining to do meaning he had some explaining to do. Well, I'm going to use my next 20 minutes to do some explaining, ethnodrama therapy. So the history of terminologies, next slide, please. What I discovered was very interesting for me because I didn't know this, but in the 1950s, Moreno worked with many anthropologists, one of them being Margaret Mead. So this is where Moreno invented the term, or actually it was this fellow here, anthropologist Joseph Bram of ethnodrama. Moreno had created psychodrama, he's most known for, sociodrama, he's somewhat known for, axiodrama, which is a theological aspect, and sociometrics. Now I believe in the 1950s he was actually offered the chair of sociology at Harvard. Sociometrics was a very big thing then. Next. Mm. Not connected to that at all, but a bit later comes along a guy in Australia named James Mianchikowski, who was in education and he wanted to create a health education method based on postmodern critical ethnography. And so he was influenced by Victor Turner, who I studied with at NYU and was developing uh, what he called performing ethnography. He developed this method called ethnodrama. Next. So he describes here what, how Turner influenced him that the aesthetic assumptions of performance and the methodological and theoretical ambitions of research could be combined. And this is what ethnodrama is as a health education method. He worked with many different kinds of people. He worked with people, uh, a group who were schizophrenic, and the whole idea as informants, they would give us what it is to have a psychotic experience. And they would be validated in informant validation. Next, please. So the drama therapy part starts around 1936. Wonderful, if you've never come across this guy, Peter Slade was a child dramatist mm -hmm. and eventually set some of the groundwork in the British School of Drama Therapy. Um, and 1936 is the first time we hear this term. Now, today there are professional associations and graduate schools uh, across many different countries, and it's still growing. Um, I've been several times to Egypt. There's about four drama therapists now, some of them graduated from our program, that are starting to develop drama therapy in Egypt, South Africa, and other countries as well. I founded or co-founded the graduate program in drama therapy at Concordia University in 1997. Next. So we could also look at it from a triangulated point of view, not just the conjoining of drama therapy and ethnodrama, but the whole concept of the ethnoi, or the ethnoi, as Victor Turner used to say, the people the tribe, the group, but in this sense, that could be a people, a group of people afflicted with a specific disorder. As you're gonna see, it's used as a health education method. Drama from the Greek, it means to do or to act. 
And so we have the action-oriented therapies profoundly in, uh, influenced by Moreno. And terapia, psychological, uh, physical, spiritual healing, what we know now from recent archaeological studies is a profound connection between the Greek theater and the Greek healing temples. And more and more research is coming of this connection between theater and spiritual healing. Next. So definitions, um, really most simply, ethnodrama is a construction of ethnographic interviews into dramatized form. Um, it's a health education method in which after the performance is created, and this is so important, there is a dialogue with the audience of mental health consumers, mental health professionals, and mental health administrators. Next, please. Drama therapy, most simply defined, is the intentional and systematic use of drama theater processes to achieve psychological growth and change. The tools are derived from theater. The goals are rooted in psychotherapy. So again, this process for me has been integrating my background as a drama therapist for the past 30 years with my work in theater anthropology from the 1980s. Next, please. Now, I read most of me on Tchaikovsky's 10, 12, you know, 30 articles, whatever it's been. And again and again, you hear repeated in his work this concept of emancipatory potential, participatory emancipation, or empowerment. It's so close to therapy as I began to realize it. Well, isn't this process potentially therapeutic? And that's when I brought in the clinical element of actually applying drama therapy in the first stages of it. Next, please. So the process in six stages are fundamentally focus groups and ethnographic interviews that are then transcribed. And, these, and, and the thing I want to get to in just a minute, which has been our innovation at the Center for the Arts and Human, is the arts-based methods brought into it. Elizabeth Anthony here has worked several times with bringing art therapy or art processes that gather data on the experience of the informant. Then there's informant validation in which that the data that creates a script is brought back and said to the people, is this true? Is this correct? Is this your experience? It's then put into rehearsal, next. Um, it's then once again uh, brought back as it's embodied and performed to the people. And um, then it's performed. And it's performed for a group of, as I said, professionals and so forth. And then this part is so important, is the part of getting feedback and information. I'm doing a project right now. I'm just at the very uh, beginning of it with Amy Quebec. And the project is about the lived experience. So there's a phenomenological element to this research the lived experience of people who care for people with serious mental illnesses. And we've just begun, the, I've done focus groups, we're beginning the interviews, and we'll hopefully do in the Folsom art process as well. Next, please. Um, so here we've added the arts media as a tool to collect, and then drama therapy per se, used in several of its forms, psychodrama, sociodrama, playback theater, mask-making, projective techniques. Um, next, please. So, I, uh, how are we doing for time? Okay. Uh, five, okay. Um, so, this is the project that I'm now trying to write up. It took place between January and um, uh, January and June 2014, and it was with people with developmental disabilities around their perceptions of relationships of all kinds in their lives, including friendships, pets, romance, and sexuality. And we touched on kind of a verboten taboo area of sexuality with this population. And I think we've made some uh, good research uh, discoveries with that process. Um, next. So, one of the things that happened in it, and it always happens both in research and in, I think in creativity, in performance making, 
is there was one image that started to really stick out in the piece, and there was a professional filmmaker came, and he actually picked up on this. And it was a very sad story. I mean, it wasn't all happy. There was a beautiful story about a love affair with a cat, but there was also sadness. And this was about a woman who was mentally ill who beat her son up, and this boy was the friend of one of the actors who told the story. And so, one of the actors with Down syndrome heard this and took it in, but didn't take it in on some intellectual level. He took it in on a soul level. And so he embodied the feeling that actually came, next slide, with the artwork that someone else had done. One of the other participants who was very, very sad and very moved, not about this particular thing, but about some other sadness in their life. Next slide. So this is the most anthropological part of it, which is looking at the codes, the semiotics, the microkinesics, all of the aspects of the people that are in this group to try to find a language that can be communicated through theatrical means. And that's the essence of ethnodrama. And I thought this was a good example of it. Next slide, please. Um, this was verbatim transcription of an interview that was then put into the play as a monologue. And then the artwork was used next. The artwork was used as the dancer performed it, so it became a gestalt of this whole powerful emotional experience. And I think, to my mind, now a decade into this work, it's a good example of the multi-layer theater communication about um, this experience of relationship. Next. So the monologue came from uh, a performer, the dance was interpreted by another, then the artwork for the background came from another. And then it became theater, next. And my dear friend, who's worked with me for so long as a scenic designer, did not just create scenery for this, he created a theater. We knew we needed a special kind of theater for this particular piece about relationships, something very, very intimate. Next slide. And so these were his words. As a scenographer doing an ethnodrama now about the intimacy, the relaxation, working with intimacy, keeping away from exploitation. Probably the most in four-letter word that we've heard today, the most important one is S-A-F-E. Where can you feel safe? When can you feel safe to create and to express? And that was the design of this theater designer who did this next. And we're just going to show you a little, a little piece of it.
So thank you very much. I just wanted to uh, just say a couple last things. I, I want to thank uh, Shannon for helping with the putting together this. Um, the, um, uh, the three areas that have become so important to me are the integration of art and creativity with ethnography and with healing. And that's what the attempt of, um, of ethnodrama therapy is. Mm -hmm.